Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday, October 15th. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg. Did I say 15th? 5th. Maybe it's the 5th. I've got a vacation coming up in a couple of weeks. And, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just uh, kind of excited to get to that. Are you so. looking forward to it? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Heading to the Mile High City. Nice. It's Denver. And I was trying to convince my wife last night. There's three sporting events going on while we're there. There is an NFL game, Denver and the Raiders. Okay. Know, Broncos, Raiders. There's a NHL hockey game, St. Louis Blues, taking on the Avalanche, right? Okay. And there's an NBA game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the end of the week. So, I and I think it's the Clippers. Yeah, is that the Clippers out there? Man. Whatever case, I was like, hey, let's do all three sports. She's like, No. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cool, but, you know. So we'll see if we get one out of those three, you know, but kind of neat that that's happening while we're there. Right. Denver's such a cool city, by the way. If you haven't ever been there before, it is uh, a lot of fun, and, uh, yeah, that's enough of me. You don't need to know more about me. <laughs> Let's talk about Andrew. How about we talk about Talking Fitchburg for a second here? Let's do that. And, we'll, and we've got a great show for you. We'll get you the latest headlines. We've got uh, the Fire Prevention Week. We continue that uh, talk. Today we're talking about the sound of the beeps. Do you know the difference? Well, you'll have to watch today's segment because we got the breakdown from it. Adam Dorn will be here sharing that information. Plus, Recreation Department update. CC will be here, and we'll get an update on all of the great uh, winter or fall and winter uh, activities coming up, uh, including this canine one. I just think it's so cool, the, the canine uh, one where you can actually do the whole, uh, you know, jump through some hoops and all that fun stuff so we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit of time so great show for you here and uh first we'll kick off with these right here i keep mine right here next to me uh, emergency order for facial cover use number three this is effective friday october 8th at 12:01 a.m emergency order for the use of a facial covering requires people ages uh ages or older to wear a face covering mask when in an enclosed space or under roof with uh, people except people living in the same household or housing unit. This order uh, shall become effective uh, the 8th of October, 1201, and uh, will remain in effect uh, to November 5th. So it got extended more or less uh, the same order we're in. So nothing new besides it was extended through November 5th as numbers continue to be high uh, here in Wisconsin and here in Dane County with COVID-19. So keep that in mind as uh, we work here through the month of October. Other news with uh, all of the rain and wind and stuff, those leaves are going to be blowing, and they're going to be blowing into the street. So we want you to keep them out of the street, especially when you know it's going to rain. Yeah. Uh, did you know that leaves that collect in our streets every fall can harm our natural water bodies? That's right. More than 50% of the annual amount of phosphorus in urban stormwater comes from leaves in the streets. Too much phosphorus can lead to, you know this, algae blooms, low oxygen levels, and green murky water. Gross. None in which are good for animals living in the water. And those of us who like to take some time for recreation. Time to remove all the street leaves litter prior to a rain event can reduce the amount of phosphorus in urban storm water by 80% compared to no leaf removal at all. So do your part. Take those leaves and get them out of the streets. Get them away from the storm sewer. And uh, we'll have a better uh, waterway here uh, if we can do our part all together. There are some signs available, by the way. You can talk to my friend Claudia if you want to get a leaf-free street sign. And uh, thank you for uh, joining in the movement to protect our waters. All right, Bike Roundabout reopened uh, on Monday. Uh, it says here uh, we have some great news. Uh, this is coming from Madison Metropolitan Sewage District. Uh, it says here we finished our Nine Springs Valley Interceptor improvements at McKee Road to Dunn's Marsh two months early. That's right, Andrew. The Military Ridge Path, Cannonball Path, and the Roundabout reopened. And uh, check it out at your early convenience yeah a good fall bike ride through the roundabout there that is such a cool location by the way if you haven't been out there before amazing just stop by and keep going round and round and round i'm just saying <laughs> 11th annual that's what i do with my kids go around and around 11th annual hispanic heritage luncheon uh today's the last day you can get registered uh to attend this event uh in person this is happening uh, at uh, the uh, Monona Terrace this year on Wednesday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's 1130 to 1 p.m. October uh, 13th. So stop on by, or stop on by, get yourself registered. Why don't I just read what's here instead of trying to make up something? 
if you'd like to register, you need to do it today, and it's uh, by a first-come, first-served basis, so make sure you get signed up. And look at that keynote. Charlotte Deleste, I know Charlotte. Nice nice person. Evening anchor at News 3 WIC-TV. So come out for that, and they'll be giving out some awards as well. And we'll be uh, recording this event for you and bringing it back here uh, Talking Pittsburgh and, of course, rebroadcasting it here on FACT TV. Use book sale and donate items today. That's right. The friends of the uh, Fitchburg Public Library have their book sale coming up. If you haven't already saved the date, October 20th through the 23rd, and we're now accepting donations, too, and they need them. So please consider uh, donating slightly used books, DVDs, CDs, and Blu-rays for upcoming book sale. Your donations will be gently or uh, greatly appreciated and uh, serve support for our vibrant Pub Fitchburg Public Library. Things that you can uh, donate? Well, books. <laughs> yeah, they have to be free of damage. Uh, no dirt, odor, mold, no, none of that. DVDs, CDs, Blu-rays, all in good condition, free of major scratches, monetary donations without restrictions, and uh, we are unable to accept books with water damage, excessive odor, wear and tear, dirt, if you have dirt on the book, I don't know what you're doing with the book, but don't bring it in here. Uh, and then encyclopedias, magazines, textbooks, VHS tapes, toys, games. We don't accept any of that, so keep that in mind if you're heading out to, or want to donate to the library. All right, that does it for our headlines. Coming up next, we open up our digest. We're going to be talking about Fire Prevention Week, Day 2, with Adam Dorn, and we're talking about the sound of the beeps. That's next right here on Talking Fitchburg. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. Hey, boss. Okay. I said I'm fine. Call me the babe. See you in the morning. With the first deed. Superman. But it wasn't on it. And we lost these. Hey, son. Hey, Bob. You know you can talk to me. Yeah. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready! That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you, too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Join Dave from the Fitchburg Fire Department and our continuation of Fire Prevention Week talks. It's Adam Dorn. Dorn, how you doing? I am swell. How are you, Jeremy? I'm good. Wearing the same shirt. You're wearing the same shirt. We're ready to rock this thing. Yes. It, it may or may not have been taped. We can't tell you that. It's disclosed. But we can tell you the importance of the sounds of fire safety. And that's part of uh, this year's Fire Prevention Week. And the sounds. It, it's interesting because, you know, way back when, when I was young. No, just kidding. Can't do that. That was like uh, five years ago. <laughs> just graduated kindergarten. And I'm doing good here. Um, <laughs> The beeps have changed throughout the years, and uh, there's so many, so many beeps now, uh, from phones to you name it, and uh, it, it's, it may have changed the, the sound, but doesn't actually change the, the fact of fire safety and, and getting out there. Uh, but uh, this year, uh, why are they focused on, uh, uh, or fire, I guess, fire prevention in general, focused on the beeps? Yeah, so... Like you said, there's all kinds of different sounds that we hear in the world every day, right? But knowing the difference of what certain tones or patterns of tones mean can save you and your family. Um, so that's why it's so important to understand what the sounds of fire safety are. All right. So bottom line, we're going to start with the smoke alarm, uh, which again, as it's not really changed in some respects it's changed and we've talked about this in past shows as far as how it picks it up and collects it and 
the different uh, types are out there. Certainly they range in prices and stuff, but uh, overall a smoke alarm is pretty consistent uh, on the beep. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. Um, right now, if you buy any brand new smoke detector and probably any smoke detectors, I'm just gonna say in the last 15 years, they're all giving you the same, the same tone, the same pattern. Um, and that is a continued set of three loud beeps. And that means smoke or fire and you need to get out. Um, actually, there's an audio clip here that will help understand what that it sounds like. So that, that sound right there means that there's smoke or fire in your house um, and you need to get out right now. It may not be a whole lot of smoke, but there's still smoke being detected and you need to get out. So, yeah, I, and I think some of them now say fire, fire, you know, some of them have an audio thing. Some of them have yep. lights to it, um, but ultimately, uh, you know, is there any recommendation here, Dorn, when it comes to picking out that uh, the, the perfect smoke detector? We know the rules, which we'll talk. I'm going to ask you the rules here in just a second. But as far as picking one out, what, uh, what are we looking for uh, for those smoke detectors or smoke alarms? I honestly don't think there's any one perfect smoke detector. They all do, they all do the same thing in their own way, right? Um, whether that is just the audible sound, whether it's an audible sound with a voice, whether it's an audible sound and a light. Um, the big thing is, is that as long as the audible part is there, the three beeps, that's what, that's what really is like the standard and needs to be, should be there no matter what. And that's what's going to alert you. All right. Uh, and then as far as smoke alarms or smoke detectors, because uh, you might hear it different ways, uh, depending on the company too that you're buying from, uh, something that I think has been pushed in and for great for all fire departments out there and fire prevention is replacement of them. And Dorn, you'll be very disappointed. I found a smoke that <laughs> replaced the last smoke detector in my house, the original I now know from uh, pulling it off. And uh, was over 25 years old and I hate to admit it but uh, darn it there it was and it was uh, it was plugged in passed the test every time but didn't actually take it down to to look at it and that was uh, pretty disturbing. Well I'm I am glad very glad that you took the time to replace that smoke detector. Now I know that you and your family are safe. Um, <laughs> there were other ones there are newer ones out there but yes I, I'm still guilty here but it's plugged in. It's good to go. Why does it have to be 10 years? So that's actually based on the manufacturer's recommendation um, that they only last for about 10 years because of they're constantly working. Think about it this way. They are constantly working. They're constantly looking for that smoke or the particles that create the smoke, whatever it might, might be to set off the alarm. It's constantly working. And after a certain amount of time, it just tends not to work as well as it used to. Um, so about every 10 years, it should be replaced. And one of the things that it's kind of going away because now we see a lot of smoke detectors that are completely sealed. They have the 10 year lithium ion batteries in them, but the smoke detectors that have nine volt batteries back that back up the power supply in there, they can still produce a single chirp every 30 to 60 seconds. That means that battery has to be changed. Now, we get calls and it says, oh, my smoke alarm is going off. Well, we do ask, okay, is it a chirp or is it a series of beeps? And people generally don't know. They just know it's going off, something's going on. So this audio clip here, uh, will you'll hear the single chirp. We're not gonna wait a minute in between for it to go off again, but we'll play the chirp a couple of times so you can hear it. That single chirp means your battery is low and it should be replaced. So that chirp is the one that says your battery is low, it needs to get replaced. Um, if your uh, smoke alarm or detector continues to chirp after you replace that battery in some of these older detectors, it means that the 
alarm itself is at its end of life and it needs to be replaced. They've made smoke detectors, quote unquote, smart enough to say, hey, I'm at the end of my life. We need to be replaced. I was just going to say, I think I've seen that technology. I've seen it just say expiration date on them now, too. Uh, so yeah. something to check when you do open up the package and make sure it's not like expiring under the 10 years that you bought it from. Uh, because that's, uh, I think, can lead to other problems there. But uh, great information. All right, copper monoxide alarms, uh, a little bit different. Um, still in the beeping world of things, but um, we got to know the difference here, Dorn. And I suspect, I suspect you've lined us up with some more beeps. I have, I have. Not beeps. We don't want you dancing just yet. That's later. Oh, geez. That's when you're outside meeting up uh, at your uh, meeting spot. Exactly, because you're happy everyone is there. And darn right. Um, so carbon monoxide alarms, um, much like the smoke detector, they give a series of beeps saying there's carbon monoxide present. Carbon monoxide detectors set off a series of four loud beeps, and that means carbon monoxide is present in your home. If you hear those four beeps, like you hear these here, That means you need to get out, call 911 and stay out, stay safe. Go to your meeting spot. Um, much like the uh, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors do need to get their batteries changed every once in a while. Um, so if you hear that single chirp, like you heard in the smoke detector, that means your battery's low and needs to be replaced. And they also have a um, end of life alarm, very similar to that of the smoke detector. So. Final question for you, Dorn, and I think um, something that's more common now than it used to be, and that the combination alarms, is, is there any advantage to having both take together? Because a lot of them you see plug-in ones that are low, and you see the smoke is high. Well, we know smoke is high, but does carbon monoxide move throughout the house quickly? Is it going to get up to the high part of, of the ceiling? You know, what, what should folks look out for? Yeah, great question. So, Carbon monoxide has about the same weight as what air does. All that means is that it's gonna mix pretty evenly with the air. So if you have a car uh, combination smoke detector, carbon monoxide alarm, right? And it's on your ceiling, it's gonna work just as well as the one that's plugged in on the outlet. The reason that you see them low is because they need power. And a lot of these you can plug into an outlet. So that's why you see them low. It doesn't mean that they have to be low, that's just where they go. In my house, I have um, a carbon monoxide explosive gas detector. So mine actually re looks for carbon monoxide, propane, and other explosive gases. That's just what I prefer to have um, because some people in my neighborhood have uh, propane tanks, right? Not saying that there's gonna be a huge issue, but if they have a large tank that's leaking, it never know where it's gonna go. Um, so it's just one of those safety things for me that I feel better about. Um, so it's something to consider, but you don't have to have that. If you have a carbon monoxide smoke alarm accommodation detector, that's just fine. All right, Adam. Well, I appreciate the information. Uh, there is uh, more uh, tips and stuff uh, that you have uh, online at the fire department's page. Uh, where people can go check out and just search fire prevention week and this week you'll find a ton of great uh, information out there we're going to continue our coverage uh, tomorrow with the action plan so you heard the beeps get on your feet that's the preview for tomorrow dorn select that in there adam always a pleasure we'll talk to you soon sounds good thanks jeremy you bet take a quick break more to come you're watching talking pittsburgh You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. 
The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps! Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spells. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from the Fitchburg Recreation Department, it is Cece. She's back and uh, she's ready to uh, tell us about some great, great events coming up here in the fall. Cece, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Jeremy? I am wonderful. And let's jump right into this. Uh, it is uh, the fall uh, season and, and winter, too. you got to plan ahead here as uh, things are coming up. Uh, so you've got a lot of things here uh, happening. Uh, let's jump into the youth uh, programs uh, first. Uh, basketball is back. Basketball is back. Yep. We've got programs for pre-K all the way through sixth grade. The younger kids are just doing kind of instructional or little scrimmages. Second and third grade are going to be just doing a Fitchburg league with only Fitchburg kids. And then fourth through sixth grade are doing travel league with the local communities around us. So it's going to be well, it fun. Sounds like it be a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, volleyball too. It's, uh, it's that time of year. Uh, what do you got in the volleyball world? Volleyball too. Yep. We have got a local league. So again, this is the local communities and it's going to be fifth grade through eighth grade is what we have teams for. Um, so, you know, you do uh, practices for the first part of the season and then you move on to doing these mini tournaments is what we call them. So then you can practice those skills that you're working on. Fantastic. Esports. We had a little bit of chance to talk about this last time we uh, got together, but uh, it's picking up steam. Uh, tell us how people can get involved. Yeah, so our esports program is now open for registration. Basically, how it's going to work is people are going to buy the winter season pass from us. It's $40 for the winter season pass. When you buy the pass, you take the code that we give you and go to our partner, GG Leagues, is the person or the company that runs all the leagues, and you sign up for the leagues that you want to participate in. So there's leagues on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for four different games. We've got Madden 21. We've got Rocket League, we've got Fortnite, and we've got Super Smash Bros. So lots to choose from. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, our uh, Andrew, who's uh, coordinate this interview, was uh, Super Smash Brothers person, but uh, well, I'll have to find out for sure. Uh, Music Garden, uh, this has become a classic uh, staple, I think, for uh, your department. Uh, so you got to get kids involved in this one. Oh, yeah. Yep. Music Garden is taught by the wonderful Beth Marshall, who has 18 plus years of experience teaching music classes. So this is a great way for parents and their kids to get engaged with kind of a beginner music class um, together. And for the older kids, you know, they have some activities where it's just them as well. So working on some parent child bonding and also some independence for the kids who are older. Fantastic. Uh, I've circled this one because uh... I think, I think my daughter has off this day, but you have a no school uh, fun day, which I like here, an autumn uh, arts and crafts. Uh, this is uh, such a unique idea. I love it. Yeah, so we partner with CI Pediatric Therapy. Um, they're a local company to put this on. So they provide us with one of their staff members who is a trained pediatric recreational therapist to do these activities with the kids. Um, so this is for ages six through 11. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun there. Uh, uh, turning our attention to some of the adult programs coming up, uh, and, and again, still excited. We've got to get a camera out for this one. This weekend, uh, you've got the Canine Adventure course. Uh, how many people do you have signed up so far? Uh, so far, I believe we've got six in the first time slot, and I think three in the second time slot. So if anybody's available from 10 to 11 a.m. on Saturday, October 9th, come on out. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. How did you find this uh, th this adventure course? It's so cool. 
Yeah, so we were actually approached by the person who does these adventure courses to put a program on in partnership with Fitchburg Recreation. And that's actually how we get a lot of our programs. That's how we get Music Garden. That's how we get GG Leagues. Um, a lot of our programs are either companies or individuals who approach us to teach these classes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yoga, another one that's been going on for a long time. Never too late to get signed up. That's right. Yoga is starting on October 14th. It's going to be Thursdays. Um, just a great practice to not only work on some physical strength, but also it's great for, you know, just doing some deep breathing and kind of relaxing through the day. Studies show that if you do yoga, you sleep better. I, it seems like you do a whole lot of things better if you do yoga. That's uh, kind of my impression. And same with Zumba too. Zumba, like if you're looking for that uh, high energy movement class, which I still don't think I could even keep up with five minutes, uh, you can come to the scene or to the Fitchburg uh, Recreation Department, it's Senior Center too, I'm sure, but uh, uh, the Rec Department to to do some uh, Zumba. Yep, yep. So our Zumba class has actually started already, but it is open for drop-ins. So if anybody just wants to come for one day for a fun workout, something different, they certainly can. Fantastic. Uh, finally, uh, for any of the person, uh, people, uh, young adults, kid, whatever the case may be, that are participating, uh, still following the uh, mask orders from Dane County, correct? That is correct. Yep. We are following the public health orders, um, which means that all masks need to war be worn indoors at all times in both the city of Fitchburg buildings and the school district buildings. All right. Fantastic. Anything else to report, CC? Nothing else at this time, but I'll keep you updated. Fantastic. Uh, we appreciate your time as always. And, uh, we look forward, uh, I, I gotta get out to this canine thing. I hope we can get some photos from that at least and uh, see what that looks like. So uh, thank you so much, CC. And uh, if people wanna get signed up uh, for any of these great uh, programs coming up, where can they go? They can go to Fitchburg, WI backslash recreation or dot gov backslash recreation. We got it, it's up on the screen and we got you covered. All right, CC, thank you so much. Awesome. Have a great day, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks very much. You bet. Uh, hit up the website, FitchburgWI.gov, and hit on the recreation page, and you'll find everything you need to know. Take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe, start your plan today at ready.gov plan. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Wrapping up the show for the day, I want to thank CeCe from the Fitchburg Recreation Department and Adam Dorn from the Fitchburg Fire Department, both helping us out and sharing out great information. We'll get those interviews posted up right Yeah, That's right, Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, at the website, FitchburgWI.gov. Won't you join us? It's a lot of fun out there. I'm just saying. Have a good day. <laughs>